Good morning. Is there a kind of true Christianity that comes without persecution? Today we're in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 14 to 16. For you, brethren, became imitators of the churches of God which are in Judea in Christ Jesus. For you also suffered the same things from your own countrymen, just as they did from the Judeans, who killed both the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us. And they do not please God and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they may be saved, so as always to fill up the measure of their sins, but wrath has come upon them to the uttermost. So, doesn't look like there is such a thing as true Christianity without persecution, not from this text. And here are the examples that Paul gives from everywhere so far at that time that the gospel had gone, from, Jude, from Judea, uh, where the the Jews persecuted the, the new Christians from Greece and the Roman provinces here where uh, Paul is working. Uh, there, there's persecution uh, continually. And so the examples so far aren't looking too good. Or maybe they're looking wonderful, if you want to look at it that way, because where there's persecution, it seems like the church grows. So where the church is trying to be true, there's persecution. And where does this happen? The first step is to truly be following Jesus. And then there arises some difference, something different between what you're doing and what the cultural norm in that place is. And when that difference arises, they want to come and put their thumb down on you and get you back into uh, what the rest of the culture is doing. And when you refuse to do it, boom, persecution. Because it is then that someone has to stand up and do something different from what's passing all around you. Actually, in the Bible, Paul says that persecution would actually be the norm. 2 Timothy 3, verse 12, all those who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. So that would be just about everybody, right? Everybody who's a Christian, they would want to live godly in Christ Jesus. Well, guess what? We get persecution out of it. That is not pleasing to God. Like it says in Romans chapter 1, verse 17, around in there, that when they suppress the truth, God is angry against them. We shouldn't be suppressing the truth. Nobody should be suppressing the truth. But here's an interesting spot here at verse 16. It says here that, um, it says, Forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they may be saved, so as always to fill up the measure of their sins, but wrath has come upon them to the uttermost. Well, wait a minute. Is that, are we reading that correctly? Wrath has come upon them to the uttermost? Yes, we are. That's a pretty good translation, actually, there. It, it's putting it in that, in that sense of wrath already being upon them. And this is no surprise, because we read in the Psalms that God is angry with the wicked every day. So God's wrath is aroused against all who suppress His truth, from all who keep people from making a morally informed choice. But, you know, keep this in mind. If you're persecuted, or I should say when you're persecuted, God is already angry with the wicked. And I, you have really two choices. You can have people angry at you and have the wrath of humans, or you can have God angry with you and the wrath of God. And so, well, you know what? If, if human wrath comes upon you, God's wrath comes upon them. And you can still be delivered by God. But if God's wrath is upon you, who is there to deliver you? So be glad when you suffer whatever you suffer for Jesus. Because it's all right. He's on our side. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you that we have an opportunity to make a morally informed decision, that we can choose you. Please watch over us and bless us. Put your blessing upon us. Help us, Lord. It seems that persecution is a universal reality. If we haven't experienced it yet or haven't felt that we've experienced it yet, then Lord, help us to be ready when it comes. Watch over your people. Preserve your people. Get us through, and then you deliver us, Lord. We thank you for hearing our prayer. It's in Jesus' name, amen. There is a great controversy on between good and evil, and you get to choose sides. Choose Jesus. God be with you this day.